Hello, my name is Dr. Elijah Matovu, a consultant microbiologist an infection control doctor and also the sepsis lead and educator for University Hospital of North Midlands in the United Kingdom. I'm delighted to be talking about an area that um, I'm quite fond of and usually get so involved in, in my day-to-day -day work. And that's um, infection control, as well as outbreak management and the steps we usually use to manage it. So I wouldn't give the details of it all because we'll be here for so long, but what I'll do is I'll take you through the principles of how to best manage um, uh, outbreaks and outbreak investigation management. So as we go through, um, I'll try and go through step by step, but the steps provided are not can all be done sequentially. They're not to be done sequentially, but can be occur simultaneously as the outbreak goes through until such a point that it's it's well managed. And this can also be recycled and redone. So the lecture will actually cover the steps of the outbreak investigation itself, the relevant uh, epidemiological um, methods, the process involved, the sources of the outbreak might touch one or two, and a few key factors, facts. So outbreak investigation, uh, initially, you'd sort of suspect you do have an, an outbreak, and then uh, once that comes, that could be information from the lab, from the clinical teams, from the environment, uh, where you'd have uh, two or more cases, more than usual. And then uh, to start it off, one would call all um, key stakeholders. Now, I've given a list here by no means exhaustive at all, but I would suggest that we keep it to the bare minimum because when you have got so many cooks, you know, you tend to spoil the broth or make it too lengthy or veer off the point. But I would suggest that you have a communicable consultant or PHE consultant, uh, environmental officer if need be, a uh, microbiology or virologist or infection specialist. Um, you will definitely need secretarial support. And then think about the regional epidemiologists, uh, media or press officer or communication officers in some institutions, infection control nurse, you definitely need one of those, uh, state veterinary service, a representative if it's affecting the local animals, or buds, or as it may be, uh, food microbiologist or food standards authority, if that's been affected, toxicologist, director of public health, water company, and so on. So this is a team that you put together and pick a, a, a child of your choosing. Usually they are microbiologists or infection control nurse, pull everybody together, coordinate it and then make sure every step or decision is minuted and, and uh, all the duties outlined and delegated and then as a meeting goes, you know, go on. Cause documentation is very important. So to start with, um, you should, the investigator should establish a case definition of on characterize the cases that have been identified. Because at this point it might turn up, it wasn't an outbreak after all, but you're looking for the clinical signs, symptoms, epidemiological information related person, place and time, that's important, and how they are linked. Using the case definition, then as investigators then search for additional cases, because you might have picked up a few, but then have, others scattered all over the place. And um, though not always the case, you might be able to identify the um, initial case or where the problem might have all started. 
So with that, as already mentioned, um, documentation is important. In, um, in my practice, I'm very visual. So I tend to create tables and pictures and color coordinate things so that we can actually you know, easily see what is happening where and can actually follow it up. So day one, we have so many cases, say an example of a ward or if there's an outbreak in the communities, that's where it started in the next case and then followed on and this is where most cases are and so on and so forth. And then is to identify who the persons are that involves the places and locations and spread so we have a direction and then the time involved if known and then of course what sort of symptoms we're looking at because in certain you know illnesses or outbreaks things might change um you know was in how the disease you know, progresses or how the outbreak progresses and then um define the population at risk and then manage them as we go on and so many other factors that might come through. So, and while all that is happening, as I told you simultaneously, is try and contain it. So with this, I mean, is find the outbreak, the apparent source and the potential threat to the public then institute examples of controls, infection control measures, basics. Do we need any isolation, containing areas, closing off, you know, certain areas, quarantining, and then provide the necessary um, personal protection, then uh, admission criteria at hospitals. Do we designate certain hospitals for to do certain things and we need to, you know, put up uh, containment tents and then the staffing the specialists to be con concerned the testing labs you know to be designated to look at, at this sort of testing areas and then create incident numbers for, to be able to identify particular samples and link them back to this particular outbreak to best manage manage it and then travel restrictions as um some of you could have ever you know noticed you know all the travel restrictions that we've had in the last uh, 24 months about um uh very popular covid um pandemic that's been ongoing and then of course testing lab the lab should be notified and then uh, public health contact tracing can we identify cases can people actually identify people that you know more then we can do or what it might be involved. So it's engaging with the, the public is important. Then strategic uh, management commands. So we can have the, uh, you know, goal command, you know, strategic planners, then, you know, the managers in between to try and delegate different jobs and have a more vertical command arrangement so that decisions can be made easily and straightforward and documented so that the process is smooth and without delays and reduce as much red tape as possible. So with um, my preferred ways, command and control so that we know things, if decisions are to be made, you know, at any time of the day, it can easily get to the top and everybody has an oversight of what is actually happening. And then in certain um, infections or outbreaks, you may need prophylaxis. So, you know, the primary care facilitators need to be informed, pharmacies and people sort of pick up um, prophylactic medications sooner than later before they're actually affected by the outbreak itself. So this can all be ongoing and needs to be well managed. So you know, uh, or anybody, any stakeholder that needs to be informed or to be informed. So while all this is going on, formulate a hypothesis and then, uh, and then uh, test the hypothesis and understand the disease, the pathology, the mode of transmission. And uh, 
see how it will, you know, the initial hypothesis might not be the final one, but it's the, you know, it's a starting point. So then draw out a plan with the better information that you've got. And then as we go along, so as some of you may have noticed is what it starts like might not be what it goes on to be and how it ends. And, you know, we might need to develop, you know, understand the science behind it, develop vaccines if need be, and so on and so forth. But there's got to be a plan and execute studies in order to inform the, the, the management team on what is going on. And then this information should be um, uh, sent out to the public and all the stakeholders. Now, depending on the available resources, investigators might continue to, this should carry on and including surveillance. So most of the usual um, sort of our studies are cohort study. I won't go into the depth of it all as that, you know, that's another lecture on its own, but we're talking about cohort studies. So everyone potentially exposed and use of, it's a real comprehensive list if it's available. And then the relative risks and the attack rates and measure of association, food outbreaks, the weddings and so on and so forth. Then we could use a case control study. This is comparison of exposure among the cases and controls. It's a useful study. Uh, if a complete list is unavailable or is if it's too large. The odds ratio, which is measure of, of associations, or again, in a restaurant outbreak. Um, at this point also, you might want to consult a statistician to help with, you know, with all the measures and put numbers together and even um, draw up the model on what the progression of the outbreak might look like. So as all this is going on, once the cause of the outbreak has been identified, investigators should work to implement uh, long-term control measures to the end the to uh, bring the outbreak to a close. These control measures may be extensive, depending on what it looks like or what the measure like, swimming pools or closures or, you know, what the organism might be. Or sometimes it might be a resistant organism that then we need to, you know, look into other better ways of science of managing it or even emerging organisms, as recently we've seen, you know, uh, SARS-CoV-2 and we've had instances of Ebola and so on and so forth. And furthermore, we got to document all this, what we've done, the control measures in place, carry on with surveillance and enhance surveillance and in labs and then uh, um, keep it at the fingertips of uh, the healthcare providers in case anything comes up or we'd have new or emergent um, variants. So communication is important. As part of the team, we already have a communication or press officer. They have the skills to uh, do all the PR and the methods of how they do it could be over the internet, the internet, the media, uh, notifying all stakeholders and then the wider public. And then so during the outbreak, so media goes out, people should be informed and to the public and also importantly manage expectations. And then after the outbreak, uh, have an outbreak report published and decimated and uh, recommendations made. And I would recommend an after action review. So what did we do well and what did we not do too well? And then so to prepare for the next outbreak because certainly that won't be the last one. And then uh, media, ensure that accurate and timely information is relayed um, and in at the you know in the right forums we also should note that 
you know, we've got social media all over the place and bits of misinformation, you know, are high, you know, pop up now and again. And because it's, it's instant, it's available to everybody, it can draw a very large, you know, following. And to counter that might be very, very difficult. So, you know, because people have different interests for whatever reason might be. So having the right information in a timely manner out into the public is important. And presenting it in such a manner that it's understandable is also important to say this is a situation and this is how we're managing it so that that's that's uh, that's important and uh, mainly that's how best to manage um uh, our breaks and um these were some of the references most of them can be found on the who website and with the global public health health intelligence network data and it's it's you know going for through um and thank you very much for listening and that's i've been uh, dr elijah matovu um consultant microbiologist and infection control doctor and university of north midlands uk thank you <laughs>